and welcome to Litigation Help. My name is Heather and joining me here in this first video is Heather Douglas. Hi. Hi. Uh, well, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, and so we're going to start this uh, series off with uh, the beginning. The, uh, uh, usually a lot of uh, litigants who um, enter a lawsuit um, they're, and, and they're engaged in, in the rules, they'll see the word um, pleading. So they'll hear it mentioned by the lawyers. So um, I just wanted to mention that, um, for example, in Rule, 50, Rule 25, in the Rules of Civil Procedure, um, the, the, there's a, like a whole section on pleadings. So Heather, can you explain to us what that word means? Yeah, so pleadings are the formal documents that the parties file and in them are the allegations that you have against each other. So they're important because lawsuits, they have to be decided within the boundaries of the pleadings. So if you say, for example, that someone breached a contract, mm -hmm. then you would want to put that allegation in your pleading. But if you don't say that, then the judge isn't going to consider that at the trial. They're not going to need to take that <coughs> as one of the issues that they're deciding. Oh, I see. So it's really important, I suppose, that you make sure that you include um, I guess the parameters that the judge should consider. Exactly, and pleadings are, are special documents mm -hmm. in that we want to include what the important facts are. So we're saying, you know, there's a breach of a contract. Then we would want to probably say, on this date, a contract was uh, formed but you're not going to want to go into all of the evidence. All that evidence comes later. In the oh. pleading, we're just putting in very um, specific material facts. And it's a fine line between the facts and then when we get into the evidence, but that's essentially what you want in the pleading. You want to know, you want to let the judge know and you want to let the other parties know what you are alleging. So if you're the plaintiff, you want to let the defendant know what you're claiming for. Mm -hmm. And if you're the defendant, the party who's responding, then you want to let the plaintiff know what your defense is. So, you know, if you're saying that someone breached the contract, maybe your defense is that, mm -hmm. well, I never had a contract in the first place but you're going to want to tell the judge and tell the other side, hey, this is what my case is. But it, it's a tricky balance. You have to make sure you put in enough facts, but if you put in too many, then you're putting in evidence. Thank you. Now, I noticed that as I was going through the rules that there's something called close of pleadings. Um, so can you give us a little bit um, of an explanation as to sort of the significance of like, of uh, knowing when the close of pleadings are or, or why we care? <laughs> yes, so close of pleadings is a very um, specific time in a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So pleadings are closed when either the plaintiff, so the party that's starting the lawsuit has replied to your defense or when the time for their reply has expired. Mm. So for example, like the rules, the civil procedure in Ontario mm -hmm. will let a plaintiff serve, so send another formal document called a reply. This is one of the rare pleadings that aren't required to be sent out. So a lot of times you're not gonna see a reply. Mm -hmm. And so once you serve, and file your defense with the court, then usually there's like a time period, so it might be 10 days, and it, once those have, have come to pass, then the pleadings are considered closed. Or when every defendant who hasn't given a defense by the deadline, if they've been noted in default. So you know, why do we care about the close of pleadings. Right. Once the pleadings are closed, it allows other steps to begin in the lawsuit. So one of the key steps 
will be um, that the plaintiff can move to have the action go to a trial or the plaintiff might move for the, they might want the action to go to discovery. There are certain things that can then happen. That's mm. why we care about that specific time in, um, in a lawsuit. Right. So um, would you say another example is like if you want to change your pleadings, you could keep changing them until the close of pleadings or am I, I can't even remember exactly. Is that right? Or That's a really good point. Yeah. Um, you can change a lot about the pleadings before, before they're closed. There are um, special exceptions to that. Sometimes it might be like adding a party. Oh, if wow. um, the limitation period has expired. So there might be little, little things that you might not be able to do, but for the most part, until those pleadings are closed, you can just make um, as many changes as you want. Oh, Eventually see. you're going to have to file what we call an amended pleading with the right. right. So that, it gets a bit tricky there, but yes, you're, you're absolutely right. You can make changes until the close of pleadings. Right. But once the pleadings are closed, I believe, would, would you then have to get the permission of the court um, to uh, amend your pleadings? Or I guess you get a consent, right? You get the consent from the other side. Yeah. Um, if you're lucky and the other <laughs> side <laughs> yeah. is easy to, to work with, then for sure you can, yeah. you can go and have them sign a consent and they can say, hey, we're okay with the uh, changes. Yeah. Or you can go to the court and ask a judge or a master, hey, can essentially, can you approve? Can you say I'm allowed to make these changes? Ah, right. And one final question. Um, in, um, let's say I want to sue someone. So I, I, I would um, draft a, what's called a statement of claim. And that's one of the pleadings. Um, am I allowed to just make things up? Like, can I just put in, I know, stuff <laughs> that that <laughs> that i i i might not even be able to prove like um because i because you mentioned the word allegations so i mean the way i understand allegations oh you know an, an allegation is an allegation you're just kind of like saying someone did something or some some fact but uh, an allegation is something that has been proved so uh, does that mean it's safe for someone for say a plaintiff to just put in whatever facts they think it would really you know be sounding great to their claim without worrying about whether they are able to prove it or, or even just outright put stuff that's not even true? Like, is there any consequence to that? Um, the best way to go about things is to be as uh, truthful as possible. Mm -hmm. There are uh, remedies that the other side can look for mm -hmm. to have, um, a pleading that has something that's completely frivolous or yes. just outright wrong, they can ask the court to strike that part of your pleading. So there's a famous case I remember, well, I don't know how famous it is, but <laughs> there's a case I learned in law school yeah. <laughs> where the, one of the uh, parties alleged that this accident happened and uh, I think they said that the defendant was on his way to get like an adult video. And that wasn't important to anything about the lawsuit. Oh, interesting. So they ended up bringing a motion to the court. Oh. And the person that heard the motion said, yeah, like that's not relevant to anything in this case. We'll just get rid of, we'll strike it out, we'll get rid of it. Oh, that's, that is really interesting. So just don't put in anything that you feel like in there. <laughs> no, <laughs> try to stick to yeah. what uh, the issues between the parties are <laughs> and uh, better to err on the safer side. Good. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Heather, for um, sharing your knowledge with us. And um, thank you everyone for watching and hope to see you at the next video. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.